Hello everyone, welcome back to another MCR 3U1 video and in this video we will be continuing chapter 7 and covering section 7.2 on geometric sequences. Here's the chapter outline once again and you can find extra practice questions on pages 430 to 432 in the textbook. Here's the success criteria, so let's go through it real quick. Um, it's just two points. We want to learn and understand the characteristics of geometric sequences and the three ways to define them. Okay, let's get started on the lesson. And first and foremost, let's see what the definition for a geometric sequence is. A geometric sequence is a sequence that has the same common ratio between its terms. So this means that to get the next term in the sequence, we need to multiply the uh, previous term by this common ratio that I'll talk about in this example. So let's look at these two examples that I have put down here. We have on one row, the location of the term in the sequence, and on the next row, the actual term in the sequence, T of n. So the first term in the sequence is nine, the next is 18, 36, 72, and so on. But what do they have in common? Well, between each term, there's actually a common ratio of two. So for arithmetic sequences, we did addition. We need to add a term to get the next um, term in the sequence. For geometric, we want to multiply. So we're multiplying this nine times two to get 18, then 18 times two to get 36, 36 times two to get 72, and so on until the end of the sequence. The common ratio here is two because if we divide 18 over nine, get 2 and then 36 over 18 we'll get 2 and so on then for the second exa second example is the exact same thing um, for consecutive terms not eight uh, for terms 8 9 10 11 12 and 13 we are just multiplying by 2 to get the next term we could also multiply by fractions which means the terms will actually decrease in value so we can multiply by a half Obviously, this is not the case for this example, but from one term to the other, it could be um, 20 and the next uh, term should be 10. So we just multiply by one over two and each time we would multiply by one over two, a consistent common ratio, but still multiplying. OK, a geometric sequence is also a recursive sequence, just like with arithmet uh, arithmetic sequences. As the new terms are created by multiplying the previous term by the same value, also known as the common ratio. Here at the bottom, we have a couple of examples that I wanted to go through. We have this sequence of 2, 6, 18, and 54. And if we take the ratio between each um, term, so T2, which is 6, divided by T1, which is 2, we get 6 divided by 2, which will give us 3. Then if we take T3, which is 18, divided by T2, which is 6, 18 divided by 6 is 3, and T4, which is 54, and T3, which is 18, 54 divided by 18 will be 3, and so on and so forth until the end of the sequence. And so we can conclude that our common ratio is 3. And we can see how we get this recursive sequence, because to get 6, you need to multiply by 3. To get 18, you need to multiply 6 by 3. And to get 54, you need to multiply 18 by 3. And that's what makes it recursive. <laughs> so for the next example, it's the exact same thing. Now we have 144, 72, 36, 18, and until the sequence ends. And we can see that our numbers are actually decreasing, like I said before. So if we take the ratios, um, we take T2 over T1. So the second term divided by the first term, 72 divided by 144 will give us a half. The third term, 36 divided by 72, will give us a half. The fourth term divided by the third term will also give us a half, and so forth until the end of the sequence. And so our common ratio is going to be, um, which is uh, represented by R, is going to be 1 half. And again, recursive, because to get 72, we need to multiply 144 by a half. To get 36, we need to multiply 72 by a half. And to get 18, we need to multiply 36 by a half. I want to go through one more example here where the common ratio is negative. 
If the common ratio is negative, the sequence has, has terms with alternating signs, such as the example below right here, um, meaning that we're multiplying by a number each time. But if we multiply by a negative common ratio, our signs will alternate. We're get, we'll get positive 5, negative 20, uh, positive 80, negative 320, but the ratios are still the same um, for each consecutive term. So negative 20 over 5 is going to give us negative 4. 80 over negative 20 is going to give us negative 4. And negative 320 over 80 is going to give us negative 4. So our common ratio is going to be negative 4. We are just alternating signs because if we multiply a negative and a positive, we'll get a negative. If we multiply a negative with a negative, we'll get a positive. So it just alternates in that way. Finally, let's go over the three ways we can define geometric sequences, which are the exact same as arithmetic sequences definitions, but just with different formulas. First, we have the general term, which uh, we use the, pos the position of the term to calculate for the term itself, like um, I explained in the last video. So for this equation, we need the first term of the sequence, A, the common ratio, R, uh, the common ratio between the terms, and the position of the term we're looking for, n. And the formula goes as follows. t of n, t being our actual term at position n, equals the first term multiplied by a common ratio to the power of n minus 1. And I'll explain why this formula works. Let's say we wanted to calculate for t4. Let's say our first term was 1. Our common ratio was 2. And since we're calculating for 4, our n is going to be 4 minus 1, right? So this is, will give us 1 to the power of 2 over 3. And we'll stop right here so you can see what's going on. If we have t1 and our common ratio is <coughs> it's 2, we're going to have to multiply by 2 to get t, t2. From t2 to t3, we're going to multiply t2 by 2. And to get to t4, we're going to multiply t3 times 2. And now you can see that we're multiplying by, uh, by 2 three times, starting from the first term in the sequence. So we'll multiply the first term by 2, then the second term by 2, then the third term by 2, and that's it. And we get the fourth term. And you can see that in our equation, right, we get our first term multiplied by 2, three times because it's raised to the exponent of three. And we can actually write this um, like this. One times two times two times two. That means the same thing as two to the power of three. And you can see that we are indeed multiplying um, the first term by two, three times, just like we can see up here, like we need to do um, to get to T4. And that's how the, um, the formula kind of works. And this will get us 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 1 is just 8 again. Um, and if we actually write out the sequence, we get 1 times 2 is 2, times 2 is 4, and times 2 is 8. So there's our T4, our T4 is 8, like we calculated here with our formula. Okay. <laughs> next, we have the recursive formula, which again uses the previous term to calculate for the next. The formula is Tn term at position n, which, which is what we're looking for, equals the common ratio times t of n minus 1, meaning the term before t of n, right? So for calculating, for t4, we want to multiply, let's say we're using, again, the same sequences up here, so our common ratio is 2, and we want, want to multiply by 3, sorry, uh, by t of 4 minus 1, which is going to be t3, right? And if we actually use this sequence up here, and again, as you can see that to calculate for t4, we're using t3, the term previous, right? That's what recursive formula um, uses, right? So we're multiplying 2, and our term 3 in this uh, sequence is 4. So if we plug in t3, we'll get 2 times 4, which is going to give us 8, which is t4 right here. So you can see how that recursive formula works. And lastly, oh, I got the arrow here. 
But lastly, we have the discrete exponential function, which again allows us to turn our sequence into a graphable, uh, graphable function. The formula is the exact same as that of the general term, and it represents an exponential plot because uh, as n increases, as n increases in value, f of n increases exponentially. Because if we have this equation, again, same as general term, a times the common ratio to the power of n minus 1, right? If we're starting off with n equals 2, we'll get a r and 2 minus 1 is going to give us 1, right? So just a r. f of 2 is going to give us a r squared. f of, f of 3 is going to give us a r Sorry, uh, this is um, f of 3, right, what, where n equals 3. Now, if n equals 4, we'll get a r to the 3. n equals 5, we'll get a r to the 4, and so on. And we can see that r is increasing exponentially. So that means the whole result will increase exponentially, meaning f of n will increase uh, uh, um, exponentially. So our graph is going to look something like this. It's going to keep increasing, incre increasing faster and faster. Okay, and that is it for section 7.2, and I'll see you in the next video where we recover section 7.3.